Have you ever seen the Romanian deadlift in your program and you get totally confused on how to do this? I'm going to show you exactly how to do the Romanian deadlift and what to look out for. For more videos on exercise, nutrition, and tips and tricks on how to be the best in your lifestyle, check out our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it and click the bell so you get notifications on when we upload a new video every single Wednesday. So when it comes to the Romanian deadlift, I see a lot of common errors that everyone does. Now this is something I've done to teach all my clients for the last 10 years on how to differentiate the Romanian deadlift from the stiff-legged deadlift and the conventional deadlift. I'm gonna go through six cues that will help you and also three common areas that I see when it comes to this Romanian deadlift. I've done this seminar with Christian Woodford from Melbourne and during that time, we really learned on how the Romanian deadlift can be used to implement in a strength and conditioning program and everyone else for their ADLs and also healthy lifestyles. So I'm gonna share with that with you today. So the Romanian deadlift or what I'm gonna call the RDL from now is really helpful when it comes to strengthening the hamstrings. In the SNC world, we want these hamstrings to be strong because the posterior chain is like shock absorbers to a car. It really helps you absorb impact, decelerate, and also prevent any knee injuries. When it comes to the world of strength conditioning as well as powerlifting, this is a great supplementary based exercise to help you strengthen the muscles without actually having to do the full deadlift, which can be very taxing. When it comes to everybody else and their health, the RDL is a great way to really emphasize good lifting technique and teaching people how to hip hinge as opposed to lifting with a rounded back, preventing injuries in the long term. So let's show you how to do this. So step number one is all about the feet. We wanna make sure it's about hip width apart or shoulder width apart and our toes are facing directly in front. You don't wanna have your toes facing out and you don't wanna go any wider than this. The reason why is because we're actually focusing on the hamstrings and to make muscles more effective, we use what we call the line of pull, where we wanna make sure muscles are as straight as possible in the original position. So hip width apart or shoulder width apart, depending on how your body structure is. The next thing that we wanna look into is your grip. Your grip should be dead straight from shoulders all the way down. And we don't wanna be going too wide nor too narrow. This is just to help you with making sure the upper body is stable enough to support you. Because after all, this is all about the hips and also the hinge. Step number three comes to your breath. And when, it, when you're doing this, what you wanna do is imagine you're breathing through a straw through your mouth and getting all the oxygen to the lower part of your ribs. This is what we call the Valsalva maneuver. Now, I'm actually gonna go through this in more depth with another video, but this is something just to keep in mind because you want to make sure that you're using core muscles to stabilize your spine. We're not using your lower back muscles to lift this bar at all. Now, before going to cues number four to six, I wanna know, do you have a variation of deadlift that you prefer? For me personally, my favorite variation on the deadlift is the snatch grip RDL. The reason why is because I feel a lot more activation in my lats and also I really like the stretch that it has on my hamstrings. So if you have a favorite variation of a deadlift, why not share it and comment below in this video. Step number four is by far one of the most important parts when it comes to the RDL and any deadlift for that matter. It's the hip hinge. When we teach the hip hinge, what we wanna use is a dowel or a broomstick to teach you how to use your hips as opposed to your lower back or your upper back. So what we do with this is, we wanna make sure we have the stick touching three points of contact. And that's gonna be your head, your middle back, and also your lower back. When we go with this drill, we wanna make sure that all three points are always making contact with the stick. And you wanna push your chest down. As you're doing this, tuck the chin nice and tight, eyes go down and push the bum back up in the air. What you should be feeling is a stretch in the hamstrings and no strain in the lower back. If you happen to feel a strain in your lower back, try and go with a different height. After a while, you might increase your strength and durability in that lower back and also the flexibility in your hamstrings. All right, cue number five. All right, when it comes to cue number five, it's about keeping those lats tight. And how do we know when the lats are tight? You can tell this by how far the bar is away from your legs. And we always use the cue, graze the legs. When you're grazing the legs, you wanna make sure that it makes contact with the thighs all the way down to the bottom of your knees. And this is the point that we stop. 
we stop just below the knees or when the wrists are below the knees. This way, we know that we're getting full stretch in the hamstrings and we're not gonna compensate with knees going forward, which is what we call a squat as opposed to a deadlift. The last cue to finish off the RDL is to push the floor. When it comes to the deadlifts, it's not anything about lifting off the floor. It's not a pull. It's definitely a push through the legs, especially when it comes to the RDL. When we push the floor, we wanna push completely through the foot and also squeeze your bum. This way, we can target the posterior chain. When we do this, we get the benefits of targeting all the posterior chain muscles such as the hamstrings and glutes, and it benefits us to prevent us from any knee injuries from any sports that we do. So the first common error when it comes to the RDL is the curved back. We always wanna emphasize on technique over weight. So what do we do? We use the dowel and emphasize on keeping the three points of contact touching the stick all the way down and all the way up. Now don't be afraid if you can only do this with the stick because if you're doing it correctly, you should still feel the stretch in the hamstrings and also be able to push through the floor and squeeze the bum. Another common error that we see that happens a lot in the RDL is the bar going too far away from the body. And this is related to cue number five, keeping the bar nice and close. You wanna make sure that your lats are tight and you wanna try and picture squeezing your armpits and keeping the bar close to your legs and grazing through the upper thighs down to the bottom of the knee. So now you know what to do when you see an RDL on your program. The RDL is one of the exercises that we highly recommend and one of the eight key movements that we prescribe to all our clients. To find out more information about the Momentum Method, head over to our website where you can download the PDF. All the links will be included in the description box on this video. Thanks again for watching this video. And if you have any friends who might benefit on this tutorial on how to do the RDL, feel free to share it to them. Once again, like, share, comment, and subscribe to our channel.